Because this is my problem. I don't think they are. Their alternative media is people like me on YouTube that reach it and then regurgitate it on like Twitter headlines or YouTube, right? If you want to challenge authority, there are good ways to do so. But like making another alternative channel and then getting like these shady reports off of like fucking 4chan and trying to report them as fact, that's not the way to do it. That's not holding power accountable. All you're doing is, is, is letting power be even more rampant because now the people that are holding them accountable look like false flags. I can't tell if he's serious or not. He's just trolling at this point. Stop saying that everybody that says something you disagree with is trolling. There's a lot of people who genuinely believe this. There are a lot of people, you hear parents say this shit too. Oh, you need to get exposed to stuff because it strengthens your immune system. Your immune system is not a fucking muscle that you work out. It doesn't just randomly get stronger because you get, if you go and infect yourself with 400 fucking diseases, you don't, your immune system doesn't come out as like being very strong, all right? It's not the same as like tearing down and rebuilding a muscle or something like that. It's not, it's a totally different process by which your immune system works. And even if you had a generally strong immune system or whatever, that doesn't give you immunity towards a specific fucking virus. You're like, all, all your immune system is is a bunch of fucking creepers that run around with fucking pictures, like fucking creep shotting things that look similar so they can come and stalk it if they see it again. Like, that's it. Like, you can take a creep shot of a million girls. It doesn't mean you're gonna recognize Britney Spears when she walks in without a skirt, all right? It's not, it's not, you don't, you don't, there is no general practice that your immune system does to be specific for one fucking virus. If you wanna, if you wanna have this, the T and B cells or whatever that you need to remember when a particular virus comes along, then you have to have that virus infect you so that you know what antibodies to make when it comes back. I'm over to being wrong, somebody can leave me something different. But I read a lot about this during the lockdown because a lot of people said, oh, if you're not outside, your vaccine's gonna, uh, or your immune system's gonna get weaker. And I couldn't find anything that said that, that, that your immune system needs practice or that your immune system like gets weaker if you're not getting sick constantly. I've never heard anything like that. The only thing that I saw was that one possible thing that could fuck up your immune system is if you're isolated for long periods of time and you undergo lots of stress because of isolation, then your immune system get weaker. But it doesn't just like get magically get weaker because you're not fucking getting sick all the fucking time. And if you believe in the immune system and you believe that the immune system works, then you should be 100% in favor of a vaccine because all the vaccine does is train your immune system. Also, why do conservative, I feel like when I argue with people, I feel like when I argue with libertarians and we talk about like how their society works, they basically, they end up like, um, they invent vaccines or they invent like government or they invent, they reinvent something. He's inventing vaccines. Your body can encounter COVID particles in small minuscule amounts without getting fully sick. Imagine if we had a way to actually do that like a doctor's office, like introduce small minuscule amounts without getting you fully sick, which is helping you develop antibodies. You're at, you've like, you just reinvented vaccines. Like you're right there. I wanna get stronger. Like I'm gonna go to the gym. You shouldn't go to the gym. Why not? Cause you're not gonna get stronger in an artificial environment. What do you mean? The only way you get stronger is if you go out and you move stuff. How does that make you stronger? Well, you move stuff one day and then make sure you get enough sleep and then move heavier stuff the next day. That's how you actually get stronger. Over time, your body's gonna adapt to the heavy stuff that you move and you're gonna be moving heavier and heavier stuff, okay? You'll never do it in a gym kit. Like, it's like, it, it's like so mind-numbingly stupid. He's right about the mRNA not being antibodies, but his concern, wait, what? what do you mean? What are you talking about? My understanding is that when you inject the vaccine into your body, it goes into cells, the cells will create the proteins that will stick out of the cell, your body will recognize it, and then it will make antibodies. Antibodies are important to actually killing like a virus, but what you need is you need to recognize, that's the memory cell part that's important. Because over time, you don't have antibodies in your body for every single fucking virus. You know that, right? You can get infected with fucking uh, chicken pox, or you can get the coronavirus vaccine, you're not gonna have antibodies forever. Some of that shit goes away in two or three months. You don't need antibodies antibodies. What you need is the ability to produce antibodies. That's the whole point of your immune system is it sees an infection, it recognizes it, and then it can go back to the base and it can spin up production, it can make 20 factories and like pump out the fucking antibodies. That's the point of your immune system. It's not to infinitely have 50 trillion like antibodies floating throughout your body. It's to make sure it can recognize something so that it can produce antibodies when it needs to. This is why, and actually, I'm gonna go one step further. This is so important to understand because a lot of idiots, when the, when the, when the vaccines were made, I shouldn't say idiots, but a lot of people were getting like really paranoid because they're like, oh my God, when they tested you six months later after getting vaccinated or after getting sick, you actually didn't have antibodies anymore. Does this mean that SARS-CoV-2 can infect you over and over and over and over again? No, you don't have any antibodies forever. You don't have antibodies forever. Like your body makes them when it needs Dr. them Sparrow and then it kills the virus and then eventually you lose all the antibodies. Corona. They die or they're this not remade or whatever, right? Is I don't know, it seems like tech companies and the government are pretty against anyone questioning or discussing the narrative publicly. That's my main concern about all this. Aren't there literally like 
a dozen fucking vaccine candidates being tested all over the world? Aren't there trials literally being ran in every country across the world? Aren't there like ho like hospitals and shit testing people and running like trials even past the fucking like vaccine dates and they're like, oh, okay. <sighs> Yo. Okay, hit me up before you trigger me too hard. All right, I haven't gotten triggered yet. I just started my game, so. Honestly, I don't really want to. I'm not a doctor. I'm not an expert. Any yeah, of these no, things. it's fine. We're just like a chill, a casual conversation. I'm not trying to scream at anybody, unless I start dying. So. Yeah, I just. Well, I don't know if you get a sense of this, but it seems like to me, based on what I've heard, that even discussing kind of things about the vaccine or questioning things about it mm -hmm. is not really. Uh, is actively discouraged or stamped out by tech companies. It's censored, um, even with prominent or like credible doctors. I've seen uh, a good example is uh, Brett Weinstein. Actually, I've talked to you about him before, but he his channel got entirely demonetized after kind of uh, having some. Uh, Brett Weinstein. The stuff that I've heard him say is like literally like anti-vax level. Um, well, I mean, like the Brett guy is like pretty extreme. But like, let's to skip all of this conversation. Like, let's say that I literally grant you every single part of that. Um, wouldn't it still be better that we like learn and understand what's going on rather than being like, wow, some people are really big dicks about discussing the vaccine. So I'm going to take like the most extreme anti position possible on it. No, no, I uh, completely you're right. No, there is. And to, to uh, for full disclosure, like it clear to me, based on what I know, it seems like the vaccines are clearly effective to a degree that they're preventing the virus, they're preventing deaths, they're saving lives. Um, all of that seems to be true to me. So I'm not gonna, you know, and I, yeah, and I don't have a, any problems with um, taking it or, or whatever. Uh, it's just, well, personally, I, I guess I have my own opinions about all that. But in other words, it seems like by the numbers, uh, it is, it is uh, doing good things uh, in terms of preventing COVID deaths and all that. So I'm not I'm not going to discredit that. Sure. Uh, I'm just saying this. There are things about this vaccine that I think don't get discussed or aren't allowed to be discussed, and those things are important too. Questions of its long term effects uh, that we well, don't man, fully understand. But like it's that's being discussed right like that's we're still running trials it's not like we're just like oh the vet like it's not fda approved or anything right like that's still something that we are actively monitoring and looking at no sure but why okay um but who is we because it seems like we is just the designated experts or the pharmaceutical companies or whoever is the authority on this and not any of the maybe dissenting opinions or like counter narrative opinions yeah, that I, feel I don't like really, are getting censored. Yeah, I don't care about like a political pundit's like take on on really anything related to like medical efficacy. The whole point is like the research behind it and like the trialing and everything, right? Oh man, there's someone at my door. Hold on a second. Yeah, go for Sorry. it. You're fine. You're good. I actually hate like LOL invisible champions. Like it's actually so f stupid. I, I, I can't actually, my brain is just shut down. I shouldn't have had this conversation. I, every person that plays like an LOL champion is like some loser that runs up and down the hallways in their high school doing a Naruto run, except they're 18 years old and they stopped doing that. They forgot that they were supposed to stop doing that. It's the kind of guy that goes into the bathroom and pisses in the urinal and he pulls his pants all the way down to his ankles. Those are the types of people that play invisible champs. Like, oh, you can't see me. It's just like my real life where nobody ever looks at me because I'm a loser <laughs> that's every single person that plays all evelyn champs all twitch players all f***ing, um anybody that buys that 80 carry item or that item that makes you invisible because i mean all of those people that like it everybody that does that is exactly that type of person shaco mains absolutely uh okay i'm back were you saying something um oh yeah it seems like in terms of like dissenting opinions or whatever like i mean we've got people that are doing the trials like the fda checks all the trials like in the u.s i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure the u.s is actually kind of like criticized because our approval process for medicines are, is so unbelievably like harsh like compared to other countries mm -hmm. well yeah but i'm not talking about that process i'm just saying that okay for example the other day um the white house uh correspondent or the press i forgot her name i don't know her name but you know the woman that speaks at the, mm -hmm. to the press she was like saying the like it's touted that the biggest problem we have in this country is like misinformation regarding uh, COVID or something. Yep, I believe in that 100. percent 
I disagree. I think the problem is censorship. And the only way you find out the truth is by having a variety of opinions and then figuring out which one holds more truth. But you can't do that with a centralized authority on information, which we have. I would, so that, I think it would be really interesting. This is a longer conversation, but I think that there is a faulty assumption epistemically that humans are designed to find truth. Um, and I think that if you start from that epistemic foundation that you believe that like given like sufficient information, people will arrive on truthful answers. Um, if you start from that, then the next logical step is like, we need to have like a competing marketplace of ideas so that the good ones will rise to the top, the bad ones fall to the bottom. And like, this is how we're gonna figure out like what we ought to do. I don't think that's true though. I don't think that, I don't think that our bodies or our minds are designed to naturally arrive at like what is true. I think that there are other drives there. Um, so like, I wanna argue with you about the, like whether or not like uh, having lots of competing information is good, but to have that argument, we really need to like boil down on that, which is like a different conversation. So isn't like, that anti-scientific though? Because isn't the entire point of science to question things, to produce your own experiments, to replicate your own, the, the results to see if things are true. It's to independently do things and go through a system that's devoid of who's, you know, there's no authority on information in science. The whole point of science is to, uh, <clears throat> constantly be questioning things and then testing out these hypotheses and sharing these ideas, right? Um, my asshole. No, um, so there is, um, there's a, it's kind of a, it's kind of a slur, but like there's a, have you ever heard of the term scientism? No, not really. So I think there's a big problem and again, this is kind of this like, you have, there's like an epistemic foundation, like how we decide like what is true and what Build isn't true or whatever. Fine. Um, that, that people think that science can answer all questions or that if we just have, if we throw more science at something or more information at something, eventually we'll come to the right answers. But I don't think that's true. Like people will talk about how like, uh, like oh, we just need to be scientifically minded ever. But like scientifically minded doesn't mean that you just like question everything infinitely. And like, like a lot of science rests on a, on a ton of different assumptions and a ton of different trust and like other researchers. Like no, no, there, there aren't very many like generalists. Like you have to rely on other disciplines. You've got to rely on other researchers. You've got to rely on peer review. Like there's a lot of inherent trust that's baked into the scientific process. And if you get Sometimes into- Sometimes too yeah. much trust. Arguably, yeah. I think I think there's too much trust at certain levels. That can be the case, um, and it might even be good sometimes to have a discussion over like what is a uh, what is appropriate in like certain areas to to like trust people in certain ways. Um, now is the time to have that discussion more than mm -hmm. ever, given how much our institutions have kind of either lied to us or misled us um, intentionally or not. I, I think that now is probably the worst time to do it. It's the worst time to question everything again is probably like in the middle of when you kind of need to rely on these institutions the most. It's probably what I would oh, say. Oh man, we're we're on fundamentally different places then. Because I think now, if you're trying to think about things through that worldview and like trust institutions, you're going to be more lost and confused than if you kind of go based more on, uh, I guess, the other side of things, which is questioning things, which is intuitive thinking, which is independent sources, this kind of thing. Have you, I forget, did you say, were you in the military or no? No, 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 okay. I've never been in the military. Gotcha. So like, I, I would I would consider this to be more kind of like, I would like be like a little, I guess, military minded here. Um, I think that like questioning the morality and the ethics of how our like military forces conduct themselves and everything is probably a really important part to being like a moral country and like conducting ourselves in more ways. But um, the time to do that probably isn't like when you're in the middle of battle getting an order, right? Like it's probably like in between those times that it's important to ask those questions. So like if you're being ordered by a commander, like, hey, um, we're gonna move to this camp and we're gonna, you know, do recon, or we're gonna hold this position down. And you're like, well, actually, I don't know about the ethics of us being, it's probably not like the appropriate time and place to do it. Much the same that like, if we wanna question- so you think we're at war? Um, in a in a type of, I guess, yeah. We're, we are like having a major conflict right now in terms of getting people on board with how we deal with the coronavirus. I mean, it seems like we're, if we are in a war, to, to use that uh, comparison though, I mean, the vaccine, and like I acknowledged, it's um, clearly more effective uh, than the nothing, and it's clearly helping to save a lot of lives and all that. Um, how is that not 
I mean, in other words, we already have that treatment available. But we're losing the war right now because of the information. What, what part are we losing? What are because we losing? right now in the United States, we should be at 95% or 90% vaccinated. We're not going to ever who? pass 60. Wait, 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 wait. What is that based on? What is that based, based on, on the availability of vaccines in this country. If, if we had the will, if the will was there, we could be at like that level of vaccination. So you you think the solution? So okay, wait, hold on. Wait. Your goal is to eradicate COVID, or what is your? Idea My goal is here? to make it so that so many people are vaccinated that we don't we can move all through the bullshit lockdowns and masks and whatever cringy shit we do. People can go about their normal lives. Some people get sick, but it's not like a big deal. It's not like spreading. It's not like being pervasive throughout the population. It's not like infecting large quantities of people. I think that's already kind of. Uh... I don't just it's absolutely not true look at all the countries where it's starting to spike again like we were looking at you can go to that coronavirus website and just look at the infected cases there's like it's some countries well, I not Italy uh, was it the UK there are some countries that were getting back to like what their peak daily infection rate was before and is that from variants that are uh, from the Delta variant the vaccine? yeah what? but is that prevented by the the yeah vaccine? the vaccine is highly effective against those variants yes and so the majority of people in these other countries getting spreading COVID or getting COVID is not vaccinated people of a lot the of other them, variants. Um, they are not generally vaccinated or their vaccination rates aren't like super high. Yeah, they're at like 40 or 50 percent or something, I think. OK, but then you're saying with, we have a problem in this country of not having enough vaccinated people as well. Yeah, so I think there is, um, somebody can link it, but there is a, there is a, one news site linked like the outbreak in cases compared to like the amount of vaccinated people. And you can see that like in all the red states where people aren't getting vaccinated, they're having like the biggest outbreaks. Um, mm -hmm. And that's like just sad to me. I, I think like there's just like, there are so many things that I think are worth debating. We can talk about like peer review, we can talk about pharmaceuticals, like there's a million things, but like when every single thing becomes like a, a political prisoner, um, I don't know. That's just that's really frustrating to me because like the vaccination part like this is what this is what's the saddest thing to me Like it is entirely possible that Donald Trump would have been a better president for this country Not because of anything that he would have done But because if Donald Trump was the president more Republicans would have gotten vaccinated <laughs> like hmm. that's that that is just really frustrating to me <laughs> Well, okay, um, that's fair, and I, I can see why you think that. But from my perspective, relating back to what we're saying about institutions and why I think now is the best time to question everything and to go by, based on um, not just trusting uh, authority is because, well, along, the, the, along this whole time, I think people have been just thrown for a loop, not because of misinformation from Facebook groups or whatever, but because the information coming from the top has been unreliable, has been going back. It's like masks don't work. Okay, they do work. Okay, you need two masks. Oh, the vaccine, you don't need to wear a mask. No, you actually do because of this. And it's like, and then that's all forgiven because it's like, well, science is constantly developing, constantly improving itself. Okay, and I'm like, okay, fair enough. Uh, that is true. And you're never going to get it right the first time, 100% of the time. But given that science is constantly evolving it would make sense like any evolutionary process for there to be a multitude as many uh credible opinions and even uncredible ones because those will be weeded out naturally uh rather than a top down it's almost like the the more top down information is when it is wrong it's that much more unreliable because now it's like okay well now the onus is on these institutions um yeah, for they're... spreading this misinformation rather than everyone it's more forgivable it's like yeah there's a few crazy people who say the virus isn't even real D disregard them versus, yeah, but my problem okay. is that those are the people that somehow become the loudest voices because people aren't sorting through true. i absolutely think it's through the weinstein guy is a really good example like i talked some crazy conspiracy what, wait what is he okay wait wait what's crazy about what he says first um he you, talks so much about like the intentional lab leak stuff on on the um on the rogan podcast and most of that information oh my was just... God, that's such a good example okay hold on but, sorry I'll, I'll let you elaborate but let me just say one thing I, I view that as a great example of what i'm saying which is for the longest time you were censored you were shut down for even suggesting that this virus might have come from the Wuhan lab rather than from the bat in the soup. And now it's like even Jon Stewart on Colbert is like 
pointing out how absurd that is to so john stewart on colbert has no that. medical training and it is still no, he's he's, yeah. but, but to be clear is, but to be clear it's it being is adopted now by the mainstream it's, narrative it's, it, there might be some no it's not mainstream john stewart is not mainstream he doesn't have a show no anymore. no i'm not saying john stewart okay i'm not saying john stewart is mainstream sure. i'm saying this lab leak hypothesis is now being taken much more seriously it's not it's absolutely it is not. That even is, dr fauci is like we're looking into it you we're, know, we're, fauci said during the pandemic remember with the FOIA request for all the emails even during the pandemic they were quote unquote looking into it we will you're going to hear that until you die that we're quote unquote looking into it of course why wouldn't we look into it that doesn't mean it's any more credible it doesn't mean any evidence has like come out that says that it might be the case it's just something we're always of course like looking into we should oh, always want to know where it comes out where it comes from but you must you don't understand see the script has been okay go on, go on you go on. must understand that no no the the script flipping are all the people saying, there's a script flipping, is all the people saying like, oh my God, look, like it actually is credible. No, the original lab leak stuff that was started was people saying that China created it in a lab or Some China- people were saying that. Or Some China that. intentionally um, released it from a lab in order, to, um, in order to infect the United States. Neither of these things are being taken seriously by anybody. And there is not a shred of evidence that supports either of these theories. So in terms of that lab leak stuff being like, take more, that's absolutely not true. It's not being taken more seriously. Well, hold on, hold on. You're, you're kind of skipping a few steps there because I never asserted, and I'm not arguing for the position of, or sorry, I'm not, I'm not referring to the people who, like you said, make those claims. I think, I think they're taking a step too far and you're kind of jumping to that. Maybe, I don't know if you're assuming that that's what I'm referring to about the lab leak thing. I'm not saying a theory of China did this or they invented this to do this or whatever, any of that. I'm not alleging okay, any of that. That's what like and Donald Trump was saying, the president of the United States. That's why I'm bringing that up. But. Well, he said China virus, right? No, no, no. He was imp he implied multiple times that like China was like sent the virus here to make us sick. Like that's part of his talking. Okay. Point. Okay. I don't need, I, I think Trump is, is an, an idiot. Uh, so I don't, I'm not going to like, you know, sit here and say he was right or whatever. But I, I, what I'm trying to say though, is just, do you acknowledge though that those theories aside and any conclusive claims aside you're right we don't know all the details and, and all of that is true but uh do you see what i mean by the narrative has shifted from bat soup to now okay we're, we're looking into lab leak we don't have all the answers you don't see that shift at all no but like this is this is the problem is it like <clears throat> I, I'm, I can't even think of an analogy. Like, let's say that like somebody said that like somebody broke into our house last night and stole the cookies and that's why it's not there anymore. And and like my, my child is using this as an excuse. And then like, let's say that like two weeks later, you know, somebody's talking about like, hey, we should get new locks on the door in case somebody breaks in. And they're like, oh, look, see, that's exactly what I was saying. The lab leak stuff that's being talked about today is the only reason it's being talked about is because new information came out. I think from, uh, I think it was from the White House about how three people got sick and reported to a hospital with flu symptoms. Right, I heard about that. Yeah, but that information wasn't available before. So anybody talking about lab leak before because of some crazy misunderstanding of anything, those people are not suddenly validated. The narrative is not quote unquote flipping. It's just that more information came out. So that's why people have like different understandings about it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, let me say in response to that though, uh, I'm not necessarily saying people are validated or vindicated, uh, first of all, but second well, of all, when you say script would... flipping, that's the implication that like they, they okay, said okay. they were wrong, me... now they're saying they're right, but go ahead. I let, let me clarify. Uh, Taking, taking that point. Okay, so you're saying new information came out. We learned that. Now it makes sense to uh, kind of raise more questions about the origin of it. Okay. Uh, let's say I grant you that. Even in that sense, it's still uh, there's still an argument for why a top-down kind of centralized authority on information is bad and why that was uh, counterproductive to getting to where we are now, which is... When all of this stuff was first breaking out, why is it that we're just now learning that three people from the lab got sick in November or October or whatever it was with COVID-like symptoms when, well, the reason is because China had a monopoly on that information and they're a centralized authority. It's not the US central authority. It's not maybe the CDC or whatever, but the WHO, the WHO which was trying to investigate or whatever was going on back, uh, back at the early days of this, they didn't have that information even though that event had already happened. Those scientists already got sick. So in other words, the reason we're just finding out about it now is the same problem I'm referring to of centralized information uh, not being an effective way. You know, and if any of those people came out, they would have been silenced. They would have guaranteed. Yeah, but the, the problem is you're looking at like one piece of information that maybe could have been positively like leaked or talked about that would have been beneficial. But what about the four million red herrings? Have you ever? Oh, fuck. 
Do you know anything about like- Four million red herrings won't stand, won't stand the evidence. They, they won't they, stand without but they, evidence. But they could. That's how conspiracy shit works. That's why Alex Jones was able to talk about how the Sandy Hook shootings were fake for so long, right? Like, um, even in our intelligence, we wrestle with this. Did you like hear anything about like Hillary Clinton and the Benghazi stuff or whatever? I don't know enough about that. Okay, like just basically but. like there are threats against our country or embassies like every single day that, that tons of people in Intel are constantly vetting and constantly working off of. Arguably, like here's like, here's a top down report or a top down approach. A top down approach might be this information goes through the Intel and then from the Intel commanders like interpret the information. Then they take that information toward leaders and they make a decision, right? Somebody might say, I don't like that top down approach. I want more information directly without like going through like all the Intel. That's exactly what Bush and Cheney did to justify going into the Iraq war. They created a, a whole separate division called the Office of Special Plans to get that direct unvetted information so that they could spin up whatever story they want. And like that misinformation literally got us into a like 25 year quagmire in the Middle East. That's misinformation propagated by the people at the no, highest level. To be clear, which is exactly what I'm saying. No, nothing about the Iraq war was misinformation. It was just decontextualized intel that wasn't really being properly put in place. Kind of like everything having to do with the coronavirus. Is you can always get like small beats, bits and pieces of information to like make a story. But if you don't have somebody there that's qualified to interpret it, and they don't have to be part of like a hospital, I guess. Or but if you don't have somebody that's qualified to interpret it, then you can run crazy with all sorts of like different interpretations, okay, I think. Fair enough. Um, but on, okay, so Brett Weinstein, who keep making out to be this boogeyman. Mm -hmm. um, let, let, let me separate him from it for one sure. second. Even though he is an evolutionary biologist, so he I is. think he has some ground to stand on. Which here. makes the statements even more disappointing, but yeah, go ahead. He, he had a... Um, the the inventor of the mrna uh technology the, the doctor um what's his name dr uh, robert malone on and uh, another doctor as well and they were discussing spike proteins and i don't know different things about the vaccine and they weren't even they weren't sound like they're saying it's all raw it's all bad they're like saying no it's effective it's this it's that but they're kind of pointing out some other uh details that i think don't get uh discussed as much in the narrative about the, the, when it comes to the media sharing things about the vaccine and encouraging people to take it, they're kind of bringing up some concerns that I don't often hear by these other sources, at least. Sure, and, and so, there might be concerns, but there's concerns about literally every drug. Like, it's, it's this is like the kind of fear mongering they talk about. And sometimes I want, or not, I'm not wait, saying wait, you wait, to, But you're calling that fear mongering? Yes. So Why like, is that fear mongering? How it, is that it's fear, fear mongering? Because there's a context by which we can present things to like have conversations about them. Like people will talk about how like, oh, like there's a side effect or there's a risk to some medication. If you've ever gone to a doctor ever, they'll tell you that. If you go to like, people will come out on the news and or not at the news, people will come out on alternative media and they'll say shit like, did you know that if you take this vaccine and you've got heart problems, it might fucking kill you. Like, why is no one talking about this? But if you actually go to a doctor and you talk to them about getting the vaccine and the doctor's looking at your like history, your patient history, and he'll see that like, hey, you have health problems. They'll tell you like, hey, if you've got heart problems, you probably shouldn't take this vaccine. If you're pregnant, you probably shouldn't take it. Like, this isn't a secret. It's not like being gatekept. It's just that people aren't on news screaming about like the potential side effects or whatever, because it's not like the appropriate form for it. But do you, do you not think that they should have a platform to bring up different concerns? A lot of people are uh, not so trusting of these establishment sources, and I think they have good reason to be. And in shutting down any narratives that kind of address these concerns in a calculated, measured way, you're only adding to the paranoia and only adding to the misinformation. Yeah, the problem is that it doesn't feel like the concerns are brought up in quote unquote good faith. Feels like the concerns you are brought up. you listen to any of these discussions? I'm curious. I see like all the fan bases that are spawned off of them. Okay, fan bases I'm, are completely But they're not though. actually, the fan base is the only thing that matters. The discussion doesn't matter at all. Because uh, the most important mm. thing is how are the discussions affecting the, the discourse, right? And if you it's think causing, that's true of your fans? Yeah, absolutely. If all of my fans were like anti-vaxxers or some shit, then I would have to change the way that I'm having conversations. Yeah, of course, 100%. Because, because at the end of the day, I don't really care what Brett Weinstein thinks about vaccines. I think about what he's making everybody think about vaccines. I don't think he's making everyone an anti-vaxxer. And I'm not an anti-vaxxer at all. I think it's just some people who yeah. have... Oh, go on. If I were to like take like a percentage of all the people that are vaccinated and all the people that are unvaccinated, and I were to see like how many people listen to Brett... Like, what do you think is going to be like more likely? Oh, I'm fucking dead again to this fucking Diana. Like, I'm guessing that there's going to be a much higher percentage of anti-vaxxers in his audience. I have no so. idea. I don't have the data on that. So. Sure. Yeah, we don't. But we can probably surmise, right, that that's probably going to be the case. That a bunch of people listening to a guy talk about the quote-unquote worries of vaccines and stuff is probably more likely going to be anti-vaxxers than... Maybe. I I mean, do you, do you see any potential conflict of interest here, though, at all with 
vaccines and how strongly they're encouraged versus I see uh, a huge um, conflict of interest in alternative media. I don't see one as much around pharmaceutical companies because you have to consider that these vaccines are probably the most publicized things of all time. If you fuck them up, your company is probably going to be fucked. My guess is forever that like if the Pfizer vaccine like ended up being such that there were like huge like uh, side effects and shit and it ended up being like canceled or whatever, your your company's my guess is Pfizer would actually get fucked. Like hey, long term. You know what? Yeah. Right? Okay, wait, this is this is interesting. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. But here's the thing, here's the thing. That those consequences being fucked up and and you're basically saying to the public's eye, right? Mm -hmm. These companies would be fucked if they did anything that was uh you know, screwing people over in the long term or, or whatever. That was just found out that there's some some issues that were not uh, brought up, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, whose job is it to hold them accountable? That's essentially what I'm saying. The FDA is, holds them accountable and every single like research institution in the world that's like doing research on this stuff would hold them accountable. Okay. Whereas for alternative media, what's your incentive for alternative media? It's to it's to stir up as many views as possible. With no okay, accountability. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Uh, okay, couple things. First of all, the people they're fucking over need to have a voice in this hypothetical, which I'm not even saying is true. I'm just let forget about this vaccine. Let's talk about just a company A puts out substance X and millions of people take it. Okay. In order for the there to be accountability in a situation like that. Uh, the people need to have people taking it and the people who th are thinking about taking it need to be able to have their concerns heard and addressed and voiced and expressed and discussions about it need to be allowed and uh, context needs to be, uh, you know, around for anything, any kind of discussion about it. Yeah, but, and, they, but that's like what all the trials and all the studies and all the universe, like, do you think like, okay, what is the implication? Who studies? Who funds studies? Uh, I mean, they could be funded socially through the government. They could be funded by other pharmaceutical okay, companies. Most, they could be research yeah. funding by like uh, universities, like. Right. Okay. So universities, which are funded by the government, or do obviously do some studies. Uh, okay, but hold, wait, wait, real quick, because right now we're walking down a really scary path. Are you going to tell me why that is you it don't? Scary? Because you're going to you're going to posit me. A, I don't want to. When I say conspiracy here, I don't mean like conspiracy. They're horrible, but you're positing a conspiracy where all of the funding is funneled from such a way that there might be massive numbers of people dying from the vaccine that are being like lied about by no, everybody I'm not in charge. Saying that. Okay. No, not at all. I'm not saying that at all. I think if that was happening, it would be, first of all, hard to cover up, and second of all, I don't. I don't think that's happening by any means. I said at the onset of this, and I'm saying I'll restate it right now. To me, based on everything I've heard, I've seen, even from these alternative sources that I think are credible, it seems like there is no major issues with uh, the vaccine right now. Uh, there might be some off cases and whatever, but that's, you know, maybe that's expected or that's unfortunate or whatever. I don't know. Uh, so I'm not making any claims on that. I'm just saying as the way I view this whole thing is a war on information. That's it, it, to put it bluntly. Uh, there is a health issue for sure. Um, but more deeply and more long term that I'm concerned about is that this health emergency, much like 9-11 was a war on terror emergency that was used to take away people's rights uh, with the Patriot Act and such. I think we're seeing similar things happen with COVID where it's like, OK, yeah, uh, there are terrorists. OK, in the case of 9-11, uh, there are terror groups that are these things, but there are viruses. There is COVID. There is this issue. But um at the same time, it's like there is also this prevailing narrative that is trumping everything else. And anyone who questions it, anyone who doesn't go through these proper systems of funding by the government, by massive corporations who isn't funded by them, is subject to be shut down, completely discredited and not discussed at all. When it's I think it's the responsibility to, uh, of the public to discuss these things. Do you, think that have... it, do you think that it might be the case that like those systems exist for a good reason or there's a defensible reason for why those systems sure. are the way of they are? Of course there is. Do you of think that it might is. be possible that like a layman could get their hands on some piece of information that sounds sensational but really isn't? You're more concerned about the layman putting out misinformation than your trust of institutions and centralized authority is greater than um, is a greater issue in my opinion, not you, yeah, you specifically. I, well, no, you can say that. me because I have a I have a lot of trust in in, in um 
central sure. institutions. But the reason why, the most important reason, and if there was a way to do this in alternative media, um, I would be more likely to side with them or, or at least be sympathetic towards them is because of the accountability issue. And I just, I hate that alternative media has no accountability. They can get the same thing wrong over and over and over again and nobody really cares because they just move on to the next oh, conspiracy. Oh man, that's so not true though. It is so true. Okay, okay. dude, Destiny, the, the fucking White House press secretary is talking about, the, the government is talking about working with tech companies to ban people universally across platforms for one piece of misinformation they put somewhere. Wait, to be clear, I mean, that's insane. she was saying, I agree, but to be clear, she was just saying she thinks they should have a greater responsibility, but it's not like the government can't force them to do that or anything, right? That She was like asked for her I mean, opinion. But, 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 <laughs> but if Trump said this, I mean, Trump has said stuff like, you know, uh, the, the, the news is the enemy of the people or whatever, I'm not gonna talk to CNN, and maybe not you specifically, but, I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, he's against freedom of speech. He's against the press. And it's like, okay, if that's true, if you can, if you interpret that as him being against the press, then what the fuck are we dealing with here? Where they're to be clear, suggesting real quick, that we censor on, people wait, universally across platforms. To be clear, we're hardcore equivocating. We're not talking about the press. They were talking about social media accounts, okay? I agree with you that I didn't like that statement. I don't like like cross-platform bans or whatever. I'm not a big fan of that, okay? So I agree that that's a bad thing, but this is nowhere near the equivalent level of Trump talking about he wanted to to like sue media companies that publish bad information about him or anything, right? I agree with you that her statement was problematic, but it's far from like official White House policy or something. Like, okay, well, maybe I'm getting too, too detached, but the, sure, that's okay. from the point, but- the, I'm just saying that like, that but also said, like we can talk about her, but do you, do you acknowledge at all that like alternative media can mess up over and over and over again? That, yes. And there's no account, no one seems to care that much? Okay, let me, let me say, Two things in response to that. One, I do. First of all, I do acknowledge. Of course, that's possible. Of course, that happens. It's happening right now. It's happening all the time. It's always happened. Sure. Uh, and that's not good. And I, I'm, I do think misinformation is uh, can be a problem. Certain people go down. Like Q, great example. Like all these boomers getting roped into this insane cult, like whatever the fuck Trump is like going to- Like 40% more weeks. of Republicans is like insane. Yeah, that is insane. I completely agree. And I, shit like that is um, a problem. But where uh, is the, where is like the idea that like, well, if enough people are exposed to these ideas, like the bad ideas we weeded out, why didn't that happen with QAnon? Well, I think it did happen with Q. I think a lot of people are like, wait, that was just a complete fucking hoax. That was bullshit. That was I wish I could. Narrative. I wish I could agree with you, but I would heavily suggest reading the polling data on that because holy fuck. There, it's like, I want to say the last poll that I saw, and I think it was like a month or two old, so maybe it's changed, but it was like 40 some percent of Republicans believe in like a Jewish child ring sex cult conspiracy among like, Repo like it's insane. And I'm pretty sure QAnon is just getting more and more popular. Like, I don't think it's uh, lost any steam at all. I don't know. I would hope. I, I I know amongst young people, it's definitely not. Sure, but young people okay. don't vote. We don't care about young people. That aside, let me just let me pause that for a second because I don't know enough about Q and the polls and how the polls are conducted. Uh, I would just say that I think it's an absurd conspiracy or whatever, like many of them. But um, that th seems like the s central point where we disagree here is that you're acknowledge okay you're saying there's not enough accountability for independent media sources mm -hmm. um but the way i see it based based on what i've seen is okay like the reason i brought up the press secretary and the reason i bring up tech censorship is that there is accountability on these things if i were to go off and make a bunch of videos you know saying stuff about COVID or whatever uh not that i even again like just whatever or forget about me just somebody going off and saying crazy things that will get uh vetted by uh, Facebook or Twitter, you know, they ban people all the time for, for this kinds of, these kinds of things. Yeah, but we're Especially talking about why do they have, the reason why they have to is because alternative media doesn't regulate itself. Like if Twitter or Facebook didn't do it, like this kind of stuff would just be like propagated forever. But I think you're putting the cart before the horse because the con conspiracies get like Q, for example get crazier and more wild the more you censor it's like playing a game of whack-a-mole and the reason for that is people are because the more censorship there is the less accountability there is of centralized authority and you saw this with covid where again the mainstream kind of narrative was constantly 
bat soup okay first it was bat soup now it's like okay we're looking into the lab like first it was no masks don't work okay now they do work then okay i think masks. like the problem is like, oh, and so many of the, yeah so many of the things that you're, so you're this is like the problem with the alternative media almost everything you're telling me is almost half true um and, and a lot of this is like the problem is that like you can't actually accurately like in, re report on any of this stuff because people just run with it so for instance i think initially fauci said that there wasn't evidence that masks were effective against this particular coronavirus which was true was it kind of irresponsible was it kind of dumb yeah sure but to equivalent that on the same level as people saying that like China intentionally made a virus and is leaking to the world. This is like worlds apart. Well, hold okay. on. I didn't equivocate them. I didn't equivocate them. But you have to realize the onus of the responsibility to be truthful is not so it's all look independent sources uh, however accountable they are or aren't uh, they're also far less credible in the eyes of people. Uh, central like the who and the cdc and dr fauci and these kinds of people they're viewed as credible sources of authority so it's that much more important that they are being held accountable do you see the difference there and th there's an equivocation of power that you're making which i don't agree with you're saying that these small independent wackos who can just spin like random cute bullshit should be held to the same standard as um or sorry should be should be held uh yeah, like as if as if they're held, as if they're viewed as equally credible uh, to the public as uh, the CDC. Okay, or do you the think WHO that, can you something? name a single alternative media outlet that has the ability to like go through information as well as a single university? Um, I don't. What do you mean by that? Is there a single media outlet that you would trust to go through a single alternative media outlet that you would trust to like go through some report? and have more credibility interpreting it than a single university. I, I guess it depends on the context. If it's like a an organization that specializes in something that a university might not Is there any in, alternative media or, organization that specializes in anything ever? Because this is my problem. I don't think they are. Their alternative media is people like me on YouTube that read shit and then regurgitate it on like Twitter headlines or YouTube. I'm not qualified to read through like a medical statement or like some report or whatever and tell you like why a thing is the way that it is. And a lot of this stuff requires like a lot more background and context to, to put into place. And it's frustrating that you see so much bad misinformation spread and it's like, fuck. Like, and the idea that like people normally will be able to see it and pick out what's true or not true like, I, I just don't think that's the case. That's just well, not true. I, I, we fundamentally disagree on who you think the truth should be derived from a centralized authority. I do not believe. I think it's, it's derived from a collection of community. Okay, but so that is wrong. Truth can't, truth doesn't just come from a collection of anything. So history Well, the is, scientific community is based, predicated on that. The scientific community is not a collection of, of random people. It's a collection of highly specialized people that are following a highly specialized process. Like the Maybe scientific, like, the scientific recently, community, wait, yes, real quick, the scientific recently. community, not recently, the scientific community will tell you exactly that random large scales of people making decisions is not correct. That's exactly why they follow a very particular process in order to figure out like what is true or what is right about a particular thing. Well, I'm not questioning the scientific process. I'm I'm championing the scientific process. I'm saying though that the way that this process works, it the last stage of the scientific uh, method is to share your ideas, is to have a community, is to not just keep these findings to yourself. Yeah, and we do that through publishing studies. <laughs> and and then through like making technology available to people. Right. So what, what I'm saying, okay, so then what I'm saying is that's part of this process too. It's not just accept whatever you're told by experts without question. It's re f there's science, and if it's good science, you can replicate it. And if you can't replicate it, you could share those studies, you could share your findings. And that's a, you, you have a voice, if not you specifically, but whoever can replicate things scientifically is a part of the scientific process as well. Have you, is there like a particular thing? I don't know if there's like a video game or a sport or whatever that you've like gotten really good at. Um, I was pretty good at World of Warcraft Arena for a while. <laughs> um, I can't make any wow analogies. Um, well, you just give me an analogy from your experience. I can understand. Do you know anything about music? I know a little bit about music. I'm trying to learn more. I'm trying to learn piano actually, but okay, what's up? There's like, the frustrating thing is that as you advance deeper and deeper and specialize into the layers of a particular thing, some of the concepts that exist at the end of some of these roads are incredibly difficult to convey information about. 
And it's very easy for a layman to read one thing or to look at something and then present that to a lot of people and make a very convincing argument without it actually being even remotely correct. But because everybody lacks the, the ability to contextualize the information, and because that person reading it doesn't have the ability to contextualize it, what you get is you get like misinformation spreading because they have, because people just don't know. They just, they don't have the, the necessary tools to contextualize this stuff. And then other people will then get called shills for saying, well, maybe we should listen to the experts. When somebody's got like one or two factoids that they don't know how to contextualize. Um, and, and like, I, I just, that, like okay. I said, this comes you down to like- presented a scenario and I agree with, in that scenario, that is, um, I, I mean, I, I grant you that that, that occurs. But at the, do you grant me that there can also be a scenario where there is somebody who can understand the context of certain things who, and because they're not beholden to anyone, they're not funded by anyone, they don't have any agenda, they can be an informed expert with credit, with even a credible history of being a doctor or whatever, someone who can reliably interpret that certain types of information and contextualize it. Can't they also bring up things that are worth discussing that might fall outside of the established narrative of experts? Yeah, but this who, is this is the problem, is everything that you just said, I think, was bad. So when you say not funded by anyone, what I hear is they have no accountability. They don't have a boss. Nobody's making sure they're getting the information right. When you say they don't have an agenda, everybody has an agenda on YouTube and Twitter. Like if Tim Pool suddenly came out pro-vax, his audience would crucify him. And when you say don't rely on anyone, people build up networks of other people and their fan base all the time that they're absolutely relying on. These would be the last types of people in the world that I would ever want to look to for like some, because I know that they have, sometimes when I debate people, I know whether their arguments are right or wrong just because I know how agenda driven there are and I can tell by the facts that they give me. Um, I can make an, an example when I'm debating people on the left. Um, oh fuck, there was a really good example, but I can't think of it right now. But like, let's say on the left, I'm debating somebody and they're talking about like how uh, like, um, there is this horrible cop killing uh, and it's like the worst thing ever. And this guy was killed for no reason. And I'm like, really? Wow, you really think so? Like, show me the evidence. And they give me like a five second clip. If they give me a five second clip of something and I can't say anything, I almost automatically know that this person is full of shit because they have every incentive to provide more. If there was actually something better there, they'd give me something more, but they right. haven't because they're full of right. shit, so you, right? You, you gotta, exactly. So there's a certain amount of discernment that goes in from someone of your perspective when you see this kind of information. And so in that same regard, like I would never take anyone seriously who's just saying, oh, it's all bullshit, it's all fake, or, you know, saying some absurd claim that that is clearly missing a lot of the, the, the facts and the context. But do, like, okay, there are clearly people who are credible and who are tackling information in a calculated, nuanced way, and their voices should be, uh, they should have a platform. They should be allowed to have a platform. If do you there is like, with that? I totally disagree. There are movies where this happens, but I, I, I wish I could see it happening more in real life. Um, it's just, it has just never been the case that some alternative media cycle is like staffed by all these well-intentioned experts that really know what they're talking about. Because I, I didn't say people... alternative media, hold on. I didn't yeah. say an alternative media organization. I'm just saying individuals or something like that. Like, again, like a, the, the guy who invented RNA, uh, vaccines, first of I all, kind of want to hear what he has to say. I don't you know? care for he, first of all, he, he, this guy that you're talking about didn't invent them. He was like a researcher contributor in like the eighties and literally like 1989 or something. So this guy is not like the one that single-handedly invented all of like MRNA technology. Well, regardless, I, I think he's, I, I want to listen. I, I think he's a credible source to me. He, he, he might be, but let's say for instance, that you do have an idea that is incredibly important about these types of vaccines or whatever. And you think that there's something that people should listen to then go through the channels and submit it. Well, okay. So regarding that, that kind of ropes into what I was going to bring up a little bit earlier. When you said about funding, it sounds like to you funding equates to accountability, which I, I, I think that's oftentimes not true and maybe even the opposite of true. Um, so like going through the proper channels, uh, good example of that, like here's an example. It's not directly related to this medical stuff, but it is, it is worth saying like, okay, Edward Snowden tried to go through the proper channels with the NSA to say like, hey, like this is unconstitutional, this kind of spying you're doing. And what happened to him? Uh, you know, he had, to, that was not working. That was, they, they were gonna basically not hear him out at all. They were not going to, 
they were going to silence him for going through the proper channels and they were silencing him and that's why he published it he went public with all the information and now he's yeah, in sure Russia but like let's whatever. think for a second what do we think is the difference between edward snowden and a doctor well well yeah but i'm talking about in the context he's an expert in the surveillance sure. thing but in this in particular field stuff. what's something that's a little bit different in that particular field than the what than what we're talking about um go ahead i mean tell sure. me edward like, snowden is specifically working in something that is like highly classified and locked down and not being vetted by the rest of the world if we were having a discussion about whether or not some parts of our government intelligence agencies like an individual agency or some individual mishap was happening i would probably be like yeah this this could be happening and obviously i wouldn't rely on this like one intelligence agency to necessarily to vet itself without like some sort of congressional hearing or something. yeah i would believe that but we're not talking about one man complaining about one intelligence agency like doing some like tomfoolery. We're talking about a particular thing like a virus and the vaccines related to it that are being researched by multiple institutions in multiple countries all across the world. It is highly decentralized, even if we are talking about a, some sort of centralized authority. Like it's not just one, it, like if all of the universe from these vaccines was coming from one institution in one country, like literally just Harvard or, or UCLA or whatever, like just one, one college or one university was like doing the research on this, I might be like a little bit more like, that's kind of weird that they're the only people, right? But when so many different bodies are contributing to it, you have to, it rises to the level of like insane, like collusion that everybody is like bought into making these lies about this particular thing. It's not necessarily collusion. Like everyone got in a room and planned something. Um, and, and there might be, uh, I'm not even saying that they're all connected. I'm just saying as on principle, it's, it's like, okay, funding for a lot of these things comes from once again companies and governments okay and so companies and governments have their own interests in mind and i'm not convinced that their interests are just for the health and safety of everyone and there's nothing else that it could possibly be interested in other than having everyone be healthy and safe so that's the first like principle that i'm thinking off of uh and so that's why and i think if you look at history and you look at scientific discoveries and you look at a lot of these like individuals have always been the ones to kind of enlighten people with new things that we hadn't considered at a systematic at a like scale that is organizational where I, it's like okay keep the procedures going keep the that's, status this quo. is only true in one thing and that's fucking math because those guys are losers that sit in rooms and invent theorems but like everything else in silent science is highly collaborative like physics is a highly collaborative thing like anything related to biology or medicine these are highly collaborative what about, things. like um Oh, isn't like, uh, what's it called? Oh my God. The, the thing that was, uh, penicillin, penicillin. Like, wasn't there multiple things like that, that were discovered by just kind of one off, uh, like researchers and stuff. There might be like one guy that initially discovers something, but he's using usually like a, he's inside of a laboratory that's funded by a university. There's usually other, re like, it's not just a guy working at his basement. It's not going to be like one random thing. or, you know, maybe back in like the 1800s or whatever, or in like 19, like 10 when penicillin or whatever was discovered, maybe like way back then that was the case. But these days, like things are like ultra highly like, um, uh, collaborative like there's tons of people working across tons of universities and like all of these labs or whatever that are working to discover things it's not just one guy mixing shit like mm -hmm. yeah and so g given that it's a it, you're right like it's not just individuals and i'm never i would never advocate for only trusting individuals but i guess like I, i'm just saying gets, they have to weird. be a part of the it's okay, weird that like we're so mistrustful of our institutions but when it comes to these like people that put themselves out as these like heroic saviors that are making the rounds on the talk shows and selling books and doing podcast. Like, it's like, this guy just must be a purely like uh, utilitarian, or this guy must be like a purely altruistic humanitarian that's doing this for the good of the world. Like, does it never come up that like, maybe this guy's just getting a fuck ton of attention and he's kind of talking well, out his ass? Let me ask you this. Yeah. Why do you think there is so much mistrust of institutions? Because of, because of alternative media and because of the misinformation that's spread by them. So there's mistrust because there's mistrust? I Where think did that, that come from? Uh, well, I mean, like, that's a, they're like, multiple sources, right? But, I, I mean, I would argue, uh, that, that's a long conversation. I, I mean, is, like, for a quick I, summary, I, I, if you're, you're implying that it's coming from the fact that they've messed up so much before, I don't think that's yes. the case. No, absolutely <laughs> yes, not. Absolutely. That's absolutely I mean, not the case. Okay, okay, okay. That's hold absolutely on, hold on. not the case, though. Dude, okay, Iraq, we went in on a fucking complete misleading 
like you said, out of context fact or like statement of these weapons of mass destruction. Wait, hold on. But yeah, sure, because we've like made military mistakes and that's been like some level of distrust that's literally been propagated by the government. I, mean, I admit to you. That means that we distrust every single thing in society. No, I don't distrust. No, 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 no. I don't distrust every single thing. But there's one, again, related to the fact that I was saying before, people in power tend to get, uh, they tend to want to hold on to power. And they tend to not be, a ca it's our job as people to hold the people in power accountable. That's how government works. That's the only way I understand it works. what and, you're and saying. But I, hold on, real quick. I understand what you're saying, but that's just a platitude. Hold, like, hold them accountable. That's some shit that you say when you're trying yeah, to drum up. Yeah, but it's a platitude up, based, no, on, no, based no. on the fact that power corrupts and it's, it no, is no, no, wrong. Hold on, hold on. These are all, these are empty platitudes, okay? When somebody wants to hold somebody accountable, there are ways to do this. And I could understand people that act in those ways if they were being consistent through and through with, with how they conduct themselves. So like, this is an example to give you a lot, okay? Let's say somebody says, I don't really wanna put the vaccine in my body because I am actually like really careful about because my body, I'm not sure, blah, blah. Let's say this person is like a fucking vegan, Jim Hawk, an environmentalist. This guy like spends, he like stays away from cities because he doesn't wanna inhale pollution. If a guy said that to me and he was that dude, I'd be like, yeah, fuck it, man. Like, I kind of disagree with you, but like, you seem like you live your life in a way that that's like a legitimate belief that you have, and I'll respect that. But when I get some dipshit that does like fucking like coke from strangers at parties, that eats fucking fast food all day, that weighs 300 fucking pounds, that'll stuff anything inside of his mouth, that will like fucking sit and do like crazy, all this shit, and this guy's like, <sighs> I don't want to put the vaccine in my body. Like, man, fuck off. No fucking way is that your actual legitimate position. You have a political bias, and that is like driving what you believe is like some hyper rational part of your mind but you are not living your life in that consistent of a manner if there the was actually be said in the inverse it could be there are times where absolutely yeah, careful who you're talking to okay i've been fighting with lefties for way too many fucking years now it absolutely does happen on the other side but the difference is i don't try to define my position as the antithesis of the people that i disagree with i see that Me people either. disagree with something or it's, people do things that i don't like and i think that this is stupid but that doesn't mean i'm going to take up the opposite position right if you want to challenge authority there are good ways to do so but like making another alternative channel and then getting like these shady reports off of like fucking 4chan and trying to report them as fact, that's not the way to do it. That's not holding power accountable. All you're doing is, is, is letting power be even more rampant because now the people that are holding them accountable look like false flags. You look like control, not you particularly, but like these people will look like controlled opposition. Like if I'm somebody that genuinely thought that the vaccine might have problems, Brett Weinstein would be the, the worst guy in the world to me because this guy, this curly headed dipshit goes onto these podcasts and talks about the dumbest shit. He has no background to do it or he says he does. He seems like an evolutionary whatever guy, but all of the shit that he's talked about has actually been like looked into it by scientists and has been completely debunked like where where is like the good hold the power accountable well how do you suggest that be done if you think all those other ways are <clears throat> irresponsible if you think that there is like actually like some bullshittery going around with like the vaccine then you like then you work if the you have to work through the proper channels first they exist for a reason and trust me right now you will find money out there you will find media attention you will get an audience if you can stir up like a legitimate theory or a have like some legitimate backing for why a thing is the way that it is but just reading like the first link on the top line of like some weird article and then saying like oh well i think this is all fake that's not that's not holding power accountable this is being a rebellious teenager okay well in that same breath though i think you're overlooking the fact that a lot of people who just also accept what they're told at face value without looking into it whatsoever even when it's accepting from the what i would call like institutions the the more uh the major narratives that are being kind of more popularized around uh around yeah, but like this is on. and this is kind of what i'm talking about though like 95% of society is you accepting what you're told at face value. But we don't think about so many things. It's only the things that are like the most politically interesting to us that we start to question. When you turn the ignition on your car every day, you literally have a fucking $2,000 or 2,000 pound like vehicle that you're driving that's like causing miniature explosions in front of you constantly. But like you never right. question like whether it's going to blow you up. Well, I, you eat yeah, food at fast food restaurants. You hope that you're, you're, they're, they're not going to fucking piss in your are, food or poison you. Like. Yeah, those are different examples because you're you're living. Those are lived experiences every single day. You're driving. You know the car is reliable. You the drive coronavirus the is a lived experience every single day. We see people dying about it. We see people getting sick about it. We have vaccines all the time. We watch our immune system work. Like these are lived experiences every day. But we question that because it's like more like politically spicy to do so. No, I think people question information regarding that because you're not allowed because you're just simply not allowed to talk about certain things 
And because these institutions have been wrong almost every step of the way regarding the information of these That's things. That's not to get to the point wrong where every step of the way. This was the quickest vaccine production in the history no, of all. I don't mean in the product. Okay, hold on. I'm not talking about in production of the vaccines. I'm talking about in terms of the messaging, the public messaging. Many of the things have been recanted, have been uh, rescinded about, again, like the masks thing. Again, like the hold the on, real quick. Thing. I'm sorry, real quick. I'm never going to cut you off again doing this. Um, Jeff Rose in YouTube chat says you don't put fast food in your blood in that way. If you did, it would be bad. Jeff Rose, oh man, dude, I'm not going to lie. You should see what happens to your food after it goes in your mouth. It doesn't just like come out your asshole. Okay, there's a whole process by which parts of it, believe it or not, end up in your fucking blood, bro. Sorry, go, I will never interrupt you like that. Go ahead. Um, well, I guess that's pretty much it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Look, I just, I, I, I guess. Yeah. Let, let me just say. Let me ask you this. Uh, you you it's just funny like i i but you're you, you are principled in what you're saying and i know that you're you're acting honestly which is why i even choose to engage with you at all but mm -hmm. um man it's just like you're so kind of trusting of institutions at a time when i think most people even on the right or left doesn't matter i think they're all kind of expressing a mistrust of institutions just at a different level and i'm wondering like i guess you don't see it that way i know there's totally the problem is like the problem is that all of it has become so fucking political that it's like just so irritating and and i don't think the skepticism comes from a healthy place i love skepticism i think that skepticism is incredibly healthy and incredibly good but there's like a saying like don't ever let your brain be so open that like your your or don't, don't let your mind be so open. what is it don't let your head be so open or whatever that your brain falls out of it or something right there's or don't let your mind be so open that your brain leaks out of it or whatever like there are definitely issues with our system. There are definitely problems that have come up. And there have even been like liars or people that have like come through these systems as well that have like tried to mislead people or whatever. These are all absolutely true cases. But that none of that means that you like just disregard the whole system that has literally given us everything that we have today in society and then start trusting some dude on fucking YouTube that gets paid money to give you sensational information. Like, I would never advocate for that. But You're that's what's happened right. though. We need a balanced, okay, well, we need a balanced approach. And balanced isn't completely trusting institutions blindly. And it's also not questioning every, it's also not discrediting institutions and everything we've built up, like you said, which has produced a lot of great things for society. This is why I take issue with the left actually is because they completely discredit the idea of America, of, of uh, certain aspects of, of corporations, of government, because of racism or whatever. And it's like, okay, you can acknowledge these bad things, but also acknowledge that we live in the most prosperous time in human history in regards to wealth, in regards to resources, these kinds of things. Um, and that's all good. And so I don't want, I don't want to say like question everything and nothing. Uh, these guys are all liars and it's all built on lies or whatever. Like there is uh, something to that, of course, but at the same time, Th this is what Peterson talks about, actually. Uh, I don't know how, you know, you I seem like you're kind of critical of him, but this is actually directly what he says. He's like, there's a balance between uh, order and chaos and like institutions are kind of like order. But the problem with institutions and old power is that as it gets bigger and bigger over time, they're also more likely to become corrupt because they're there's no one presiding over them. There's no one holding them accountable. So that's an important part of the equation as well. I understand that. I But like. If that is going to be the case and people want to serve as some juxtaposition to that, then they need to be willing to do the work. And that doesn't exist anywhere in it alternative does. media. It it it's does. not Tim Pool. It's not Dave Rubin. It's not none I of agree. these people. I didn't say them. Didn't it's say not them. Brett Weinstein. It's not fucking Joe Rogan. It's none of these guys are like funding alternative studies to actually like do investigations. None of these people are trying to gain traction anywhere in the scientific world. Like it's all just people on the outside doing these weird little tiny nitpicks of pieces of misinformation that aren't even true that are like causing people to second guess all of our institutions. They're not even standing to power in a good way. It's just a bunch of people trying to make a quick buck off of their new fucking podcast or their books. That's all it is. That's my problem. Like who, like who right now, not to put you on the spot, but like, is there like a particular person that you would say like, this guy stands against literally the entire scientific community, but I think his advice is really good. Um, I don't have a, uh, no, I don't have anyone in mind to, to say that, but I've, I've watched a few things with people who seem credible and they bring up information that seems like they're not, they're not just saying it's all bad or it's all black and white. They're kind of bringing up these, these again, nuanced things. And that's when I tend to trust someone is when they do that, not when they're just picking a, a team or like picking a side. Uh, and I would never say that, you know, Tim Pool or Joe Rogan or something is like qualified to be a central, uh, in other words, I'm not suggesting that 
you or anyone trust an individual solely. Uh, I'm really just saying don't I, I don't see a reason to trust institutions solely. That's sure, all. Sure, I, and I understand that. I'm just man, like the alternative shit is just so, <laughs> it's just so bad. Like the only I, I and I caution you against this just because I saw like everything you were typing about like immune systems and shit on on Twitter. Like it's so easy to take like one or two pieces of like misinformation and like push like these incredibly like misinformed like. Yeah, like, and it's so, and like, when I we say that, like, that's why I was hesitant for, because I totally agree. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be misleading people. I don't want to be, I myself, I'm, I'm, that's why I'm here to talk to you about the meta. I, I've only brought up really about the meta of this whole conversation sure. because I don't personally feel qualified to be like, okay, this is what you need. This is what you don't need. It's like, I know some basic things about the immune system, about vaccines, about viruses, and, and so I'm not going to claim to be an expert on any, on, on any of these things, but I just think there needs to be a discussion that should that should be allowed uh, publicly amongst yeah, credible. There is a discussion. People. It's happening, but like the big, the important work is happening inside the institutions. That's where the trials are actually going on. That's where the really good data is being collected. Like there were other huge pharmaceuticals that tried to make vaccines that failed. These are like eight, like massive, pharma, like multi billion dollar companies. They tried to make, they couldn't do it. Like it's not like everybody's just circle jerking themselves and patting themselves on the back and like every, like, yeah. I, I, yeah, well, I guess like, yeah, I, yeah when it, like there's just, there's so much misinformation out there. It's so easy to take one or two pieces of misinformation and just like make it out that this is the case. And I don't know. I just, I feel like I like, I know that I don't know where you stand on this now, but like, in my opinion, I think that the GME thing was a really good example of that too, where uh, now maybe you're still in the like super stock or GME subreddits, but 99% of everything that every single alternative media outlet was printing, that was complete and total lies. There are still people that think that a big short squeeze is coming and that the GME stock is going to go to 100,000 a share. There's whole subreddits dedicated to it that front page are all, and it was just quote unquote people being critical but it wasn't none of these people had any good criticism none of them knew anything about the financial institutions none of them had any idea you know that's a good example that's actually oh my god i'm so glad you brought that up because uh, this is so interesting to me because i feel like you're keeping track of similar things but you have a different perspective okay so so here's my perspective on that i've been thinking a lot about that the the this, um meme stocks right and like it is kind of this um People are just constantly on the Reddit, like to the moon, you know, whatever guys next week for sure. Like the squeeze is happening. Like guys, it's for sure happening. Right. You know, like kind of like Q or whatever. Um, there's a lot of that, like this, this highfalutin kind of whatever, uh, rhetoric going around on those things. But what's interesting about it to me is the fact that many people have made a fuck ton of money off of what is essentially a completely nonsensical, non-fundamental stock. Like, in other words, GME, you know, is not actually worth whatever. What is that? Like probably like 200 right now. Last I checked, like around there. Something. Uh, it's not. Yeah, it's not like there's no fundamentals that make it worth that. It's all based on pretty much based on hype. Like there might have been some squeeze potential at some point that maybe was extracted or whatever. Something, some modicum of something there, right? But it's been extrapolated to this ridiculous point because of hype, because they're selling an idea. And I've been thinking a lot about that and the other stocks that have done that and crypto coins, which are all doing that. And it tells me that people are choosing to invest their money and their, and I think beyond that is just a measure of their time, their, their thinking or whatever. Sure, but like, people, you keep in mind, you're only, you're, you're, think, hold you're, on. you're only, let, let me seeing... finish, let me finish. Okay. Let me finish really quick. Let me finish. What that's indicative of to me is that people are not operating anymore on a rational basis and they're proving, hey, you could operate irrationally. It's all fucking fake money anyway. So let's just uh, let's just pump this stock. Let's just pump these coins and dump them. And it's, you know, obviously a lot of people are losing their fucking livelihoods, putting their money into that and, and just blindly trusting shit. But the point is that like people are essentially creating this wealth out of hype, out of exactly what I'm saying, which is like they're just none of it is based on these institutional yeah, but none, none things. of this is none of this is new none of this is novel we've always known this this is how the stock market works none of this has anything to do with like, yeah but it's, it's 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 definitely hitting new heights now with these on kinds one of stocks. particular stock it might be sure but none of this is new information AMC a lot of people well. are losing a lot of money on it or did lose a lot of money on it and none of the underlying fundamental analysis was true 
Like, if we want to try and like rewrite history now, it's like, oh, well, it was all about proving that you can hyperinflate a stock by getting a bunch of retail dipshits and like to pump up the price. Nobody would have disagreed. They're like, oh, of course, people can do that. It's it, like there's yeah, reasons the why they. It's happening and it's working, and the stock price is still at two hundred dollars or whatever it's at. Is proving that like, wait, this isn't just an anomaly. Like, no, this it hasn't, is how it hasn't people proved are anything. No, that's literally how the entire crypto markets operate. Like, exactly. Yeah, it is, and that's the future. But the, no, no, wait, wait. But none of this is new. Everybody knows this. A stock buys and sells for for what somebody thinks it's worth. That's how it's always been. Right, but it's previously been. People have made these investments more so based on fundamental things, based on concrete. You know, they wouldn't people this GME thing happened now for a reason. It didn't just happen now because uh, people could have done this in 19, you know, 70s or something and they just didn't. Uh, it ha it's happening now because people are like, wait a minute, we can just uh, get an entire Reddit board to invest in this and that's going to pump the price. Who cares about the fundamentals? Yeah, it's called a pump and dump. People have been doing this for ages. <laughs> like. Not to the degree they're doing it now, not to the well, scale. Yeah, it's different now right. because you've got like higher levels of centralization and higher levels of coordination now because you've got these mega forums. Whereas back when I was a kid, it was just like a bunch of like, you know, 1,000 member forums or like 5,000 member message boards or whatever. Like it's more centralized now, sure, but there's nothing novel or new about it. This is like, it's just is what the market is. I, I, well, like, and also, yeah. you, and we can have that discussion now about like the the ability of like a centralized trading body of decent uh, or a centralized decentralized trading body. I don't know what you'd call it. A collection of like individual investors, like being able to pump like certain stocks. We can talk about that. But that is a far cry from the initial fundamental claims from these people that the, that there is a massive short squeeze coming, that the stock is going to a hundred thousand dollars. Like none of that is true. None of the fundamental information relating to any of these stocks. Well, let me ask you this. Here. Yeah. Would you, when this whole buzz was first starting, when GME was at, let's say it was at 50 bucks, when this when this whole like hype was starting in uh, January or whatever, um, would you have? I, I would be curious back then. Like if I asked you, like, do you think in you know nine months or whatever this thing's gonna be at uh, two hundred dollars a share? You'd be like, absolutely not. I would bet my life savings against it. I, I feel like I have that's no what idea. No, maybe I have no idea though. I don't think it probably won't be there in two years, but it could be. Securities okay, buying. Okay, it's, my no, 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 no. Hold on. We had to be. I need to be okay. ultra clear. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. None okay. of this is about the price of the security. It's about the underlying fundamental analysis. Chances are, in three years or in one year, GM will be trading at at ten dollars a share. But it's possible that in two years, it might trade at thousand dollars a share. Maybe there's another big Reddit meme moment about it. That's possible. But that has the price has nothing to do with the fundamental analysis, which was that all of the hedge funds are colluding to do some ultra super secret mother of all short squeeze things that the entire financial industry is on trying to protect them. Robin Hood and FINRA and Congress and the SEC. Like none of that is true. That's all bullshit. If you want to just have like a meme conversation trying to guess the price, if I could guess the price of any security, I would be a fucking trillionaire. Full stop. If I were to tell you that, like, I know for a fact in one year, and and the reason why I know I wouldn't have said this because I make the same challenge to everybody that does this. If if I were to ever be on stream, I'd tell you in one year it's absolutely going to go down, and I know that for a fact. Then you say, oh, we'll go short it, one hundred percent. Go 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 take out the money that you need. Go leverage yourself and go short the fucking stock. And I'd be like, oh well, fuck, you got me. I don't actually believe that. I'm just talking shit because I'm an influencer, All right? That's what I would say. Like the price could be anything. Who knows? But I do know that the fundamental analysis was all garbage and bullshit. There was no real DD. All of it was garbage made by a let bunch me, of Let me grant you all that. Let me let sure. me grant you all of that, and then say this, which is. The fact that people made all this money off it, the fact that the share price is there, is proof that none of that shit mattered to this, to this particular pump and dump or whatever you. It's not even a complete dump. It's like, hold on, let me let me. Re I think we live like that. we have like totally what different I'm trying epistemic to say is, worlds that we, we do, inhabit. We do. I think <laughs> we do, we do. But what I'm saying is like, yeah, you're right. It's completely detached from all these fundamentals, right? But the fact that it got there shows that none of that shit matters when it comes to actual the actual money, the actual numbers of it. People are just creating their own numbers because of the hype, because of this, whatever they're saying, whether it's true or not. But that can happen like, right now. It can. Yeah, that's my point. But no, but nobody ever can. Nobody ever would have said anything different. A whole bunch of people can fucking pump the fuck out of us. That's literally why pump and dumps exist and why I they're illegal. What I'm saying is increasingly those fundamentals they're not mattering to people as they used to. Around just and because of I, no no that's just because of like one meme stock that like everybody on Reddit is like super bought into like keeping afloat. But like 
Th that's not like I mean, like the only thing is crypto, crypto coins are doing that every day too. They're just all based on nothing. <clears throat> well, that's that because it's all speculation and commodity trading, right? Like, oh, maybe it'll be worth that. Right. But that, again, like well, none of that popular than ever. Why do you think that's more crypto popular stuff... than ever? Why are people putting their money? Wait, hold into on, that? because crypto stuff isn't new either. It's literally gold and silver, <laughs> except now it's electronic. Yeah, gold, gold and silver is the same shit that's bought and sold because people speculate on it. Well, yeah, but I mean, those are tangible commodities. No, they're not. No one cares. No one cares that nobody that trades or buys or sells gold or silver is getting the fucking bars delivered to their basement. It's all speculation bullshit. Gold and silver is 100% just as much speculation bullshit. Well, yeah, but it's, okay, but but I'm saying it, gold is a is an actual rare mineral, whereas crypto is just a no. numbers on a screen. It, what, you know what else is rare? Technically, dirt is scarce. <laughs> I mean, like insidious rock is, or whatever, igneous rock is scarce. Anything on the planet is quote unquote technically okay, okay, scarce. Okay, but hold on. But yeah. you're talking past the point. I'm just saying there's, it's gold is a tangible material. It's a 3D object that you can touch and feel, whereas crypto is Yeah, but not. I'm saying gold is is a shit metal that does that no one cares about. It's used in some electronics. Like we're more, we're probably more concerned about sand at this point and running out of that for microprocessors than we are for fucking gold. People buy and sell gold and they trade it because of what they think someone else will buy and sell it for. That's how commodity, that's, or at least that particular market, like gold and silver, that's how those markets work. People buy and sell them based on what they think other people will buy and sell them for. It's the same thing with cryptos. It's what's going on right now with GME. None of this is new. None of it is, none of it is unique. None of it is unprecedented. None of it is breaking any understanding oh, like man. people you really right. don't think any of this is abnormal no, at all. absolutely not nobody <laughs> is like writing new econ textbooks to expand our financial theories to incorporate what happened with gme it's just a ton yeah. of retail investors have gotten and gassed up a stock and people continue to trade it at that amount because they think that in the future they can sell it for a little bit more like see you're a very rational person you think very rationally human beings are not rational creatures i'm not they don't have to be for anything i'm saying to be true though like, well, you don't have to rationally, when you buy some shit, you buy it because you think you can sell it for more in the future. That's why people buy and sell shit. Right, right. Yeah. I just think this is a, a preview of what's to come in the future. Crypto and these kinds of meme stocks where it's just like, it's all speculative. It's all fucking, and that's going to be become more of the norm rather than like just oh, this I kind guess. of fringe thing. But we'll see. We'll I guess see. we'll see. Okay. Well, hey, listen, we disagree on, on basically everything, but I love you, okay? Yeah, man. No, I, I like talking with you. Even if we disagree, I think, I don't know, maybe we disagree on some things. I like, again, just to sum up real quick, I, a lot of what you said is true. I just think it's missing certain other parts of it. But uh, like, I, yeah, so I don't know. Hopefully that okay. came across. I will say massive distrust of institutions, like he, or, or some big level of distrust of institutions, big levels of distrust of like these like big stories that are kind of being pushed onto society or whatever. A lot of this shit, you should check out Foucault, read a little bit of postmodern theory, because I think you would love postmodernism, okay? Because a lot of the shit you're talking about, this rejection of this organization, this hierarchical view of society, very postmodern, my dude. So check it out sometime. Maybe you'll find some cool shit, <laughs> okay? All right. Uh, okay, later, man. I love you, buddy. Bye. Man, that's a that's a hard nut to crack. We need to have like an a, a, like an epistemic foundation conversation to move it from there. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Gotcha.